Welcome back, Rock Raiders. This is Slugger, and today we will be looking at set 4950 Lodadoza. Here's the scoop. Axel returns to make another appearance, and he brought a couple of trusty wrenches to assist with any needed repairs or maintenance. The Loader Dozer also marks the first appearance of a different kind of beast, the Rock Monster, featuring an articulated arm that is capable of causing all kinds of trouble. Hungry for the same energy crystals as the Rock Raiders, the Rock Monsters pose a serious threat to them. At least, that's what we're told. However, the reality appears to be very different when you put the two together. Honestly, given its size and weight, it really looks like the Loader Dozer is more than a match for the Rock Monsters, as do all the large vehicles. Oh well, for being the first big fig, I'd say the Rock Monsters leave a good impression, and still look intimidating when compared to the rival miners. The Rock Monster was only ever included in one other set, so getting one here adds a lot of value. Now, let's turn our attention towards the Loader Dozer itself. Besides having one of the best names in the Rock Raiders arsenal, it also features one of the best play features. The raising and lowering bucket mechanic via internal chain system is well executed, and I found it surprisingly addictive to drive it around and scoop everything up. You can see from this prototype model that at one time it used two chains on the outside of the frame, but was likely altered to save on costs and improve the play function. Other prototype images exist of the Loader Dozer, but I'm not going to go into as much detail this time around. As with the Granite Grinder, I am glad with what we got in the end compared to these earlier designs. You'll notice on the back there is a locking mechanism to keep the bucket in a raised position, but I've never really found a purpose for this. The bucket is able to handle significant loads on its own, and the only time I found it needed the lock was when the load was so heavy it tipped the vehicle right over. In addition, it unfortunately adds red into the Rock Raiders color palette, which clashes pretty hard against the other visuals. It's obvious this was done to help highlight the play feature, but I think yellow could have worked just as well and remained in theme. As it stands, these two pieces are the only red bricks used in Rock Raiders, save for the red cylinder bricks used in the dynamite builds we will see in the larger sets. Speaking of which, we unfortunately don't receive that build here either. Just a simple printed bundle of dynamite that uh, apparently is stored on the roll cage? The lack of dynamite build isn't a deal breaker by any means, but it is annoying that it doesn't align with the consistency we see in the other sets. The ratcheted anchor pieces that connect to the roll cage also fall under this category, as they are yellow in every other set. The design of the vehicle follows the less is more approach, with mixed results. Last episode we spoke of juniorization, simple builds that use large bricks, and well, it's hard to defend the Loader Dozer against such accusations. With less pieces than even the Granite Grinder, and precious few wasted on a redundant locking mechanism, the level of detail here is noticeably scant. I believe this to be the Loader Dozer's biggest drawback. No dynamite build, no engine block, and a cockpit design that would make a minimalist blush, it's no doubt detail was cut to keep the model affordable. As a kid back then, this sacrifice was tolerable, but as an AFOL today, detail is king. Luckily, modification is LEGO's middle name. My modifications for the Loader Dozer are quite extensive compared to our previous outings, but I think they really help round out the vehicle's character. First off, I added the Chrome Crusher's wicked engine block and removed the unnecessary locking mechanism. Tail lights were also a must, as was including the Rock Raiders logo somewhere, as it was noticeably absent from the stock model. You can see from this angle, I fleshed out the profile of the cab too, as well as added more detail to the interior and a lever to control the bucket. In total, I think I may have doubled the piece count with these modifications, but it puts a spotlight on how barren the original set was. Let's move on to the alternate builds now. 
There are three on the back of the box, and just like the granite grinder, one also appears on the front. The first build is that of a large seafaring hovercraft, seemingly suited for long-range missions. This design was apparently inspired by Ian Porapat of Florida, and a step-by-step -step guide on how to build it was included in LEGO Mania magazine January-February 2000. The second build is an interesting one with its long, alligator-like snout. Weirdly enough, I really dig the design choices here, and I think a more fleshed-out model that wasn't limited to the Loader Dozer's pieces could really shine. That said, I think most people are drawn to another aspect of this alt build, the enslaved rock monster. Using a ball and chain, as well as what we could assume to be energy crystal lures or riot sticks, it seems the rock raiders have found a way to turn the tide. The third and final alt build is... bad. Yeah, it's bad. Don't build it. it. It sounds harsh, but there's very little to redeem it when compared to the first build. It's admirable the designers were able to come up with three alt builds with the limited number of pieces here, but this one's too much of a stretch. In conclusion, the Loader Dozer packs a lot of play value, at the expense of detail and complexity. If there is a juniorized Rock Raider set, this is the one. Still, I found myself pleasantly surprised by the quality of this set, and it goes to show that the coveted price to part ratio isn't everything. Have fun with your Lego, whether it takes 80 pieces or 800. I've been your host, RR Slugger, and I hope to see you again for some high adventure deep underground.